Well, T minus 11 days until the November election. It is coming up fast. And as we showed you earlier, both candidates are crisscrossing the state as we near the home stretch now. And the director of the Marquette Law School poll, Professor Charles Franklin, joining us for his final visit before election day. Good to see you. Good to see you. And you've got another, you got a lot of work to be done yet. This is, you're a busy man these days leading up to the election. Well, we're winding down at last. <laughs> You'll have one uh, more poll coming out before election day next right. Wednesday. Next Wednesday at noon. Um, That'll be our last look. We had a flurry of polls this week with four new ones uh, of the last five, or three new ones rather, with the last five polls that have come out. Two of them have Burke ahead by one. Two of them have Walker ahead by one. We have it dead tied. So there's a lot of consensus that it's a real close race right now. Whether there'll be a last minute break or whether voter turnout for one group or another will boost a bit, that still remains to be seen. When you go back to where the polls were back when you started gauging mm -hmm. this race, it's amazing how it's changed, isn't it? If you go way back to January and March, we had Governor Walker up by six or seven points in those mm -hmm. polls. Starting in May, though, it's been pretty close. Mm -hmm. And if you look at just registered voters, our last six polls have been either a a tie, a one-point lead, or a three-point lead, and we've had two of each of those. Wow. So it's been pretty consistent among registered voters. Among likely voters, there's more ups and downs, but still a range from two-point Burke lead to a five-point Walker lead, uh, mostly inside mm -hmm. that, that range. Uh, driven by one side gets a little more enthusiastic, has a good week, gets a little more likely to vote next week, they may be down a little bit pulls back down. This is a very small range of variation and a much closer race across all of the polling than we saw in the run-up to the 2010 election or to the 2012 recall where Walker was holding a pretty steady six or seven point advantage. Well, a reflection of how close it is and how few days remain until the election, big names are starting to come now uh, to rally support for both sides. Former President Bill Clinton was in Milwaukee today. Do you think that makes a difference to people who are, is anybody still undecided? <laughs> well, I'm not sure it's the undecided. We're not really at the point of trying to change people's preferences, but we're certainly at the point of trying to change turnout. When you look at the drop off in turnout between a presidential year and a midterm year, in the Milwaukee electorate, that's especially important because the, the drop off of Democratic votes tends to be a good bit bigger than the drop off in Republican votes there between presidential and midterms. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, Milwaukee City produces an advantage to the Democrats in net vote of, in a presidential year, around 150,000 votes. But in a non-presidential year, somewhere between 70 and 80,000 net mm -hmm. votes. So that shrinking of the net vote, the net advantage, is something that Democrats would like to make up with a higher Democratic turnout in the city. And in the last few midterms, they've been successful. Democratic turnout has actually been going up in the last three midterms, but it's still well below their presidential levels. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, you know, we talked about President Clinton was here today. I'm not sure how former presidents can impact an upcoming election, but the current president's coming here next sure. week. And yesterday we heard uh, Governor Walker say he thinks that, well, he thinks that'll hurt mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mary Burke. What do you think? I mean, how does Obama play out in the state of Wisconsin? Well, in the state as a whole, his approval rating this fall has been right at 44 percent. That's very close to his national average approval rating. So his disapproval is in the low 50s, so he's underwater. But in the state as a whole, he's neither more popular nor less popular than in the country as a whole. But in Milwaukee, where President Clinton was today, mm -hmm. where Michelle Obama was a few weeks ago and where the president will be, that approval rating is 64 percent. And here in Madison, it's uh, uh, 58 percent. Mm -hmm. So there's a very uh, strong support for the president in these two very strong Democratic based counties. Not surprisingly, that's where he's going. In other parts of the state, the president's approval is lower and, and certainly his appearance there wouldn't be so helpful. But when you're trying to motivate the Democratic base to turn out, um, with the First Lady here in Madison, with the President in, in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. you're seeing a real play to the base voters in turning them out. Tonight at 6 o'clock, Jessica Arp is looking at the so-called purple counties in our area, mm -hmm. counties that don't identify themselves either red or blue. Do you think they'll make that's going to be the difference? It certainly day? can be. Uh, 
When we look at the shift between the recall and the presidential election, for example, um, there's a handful of counties, it's about 15 or 20 counties, that shifted sides between those. But the other thing that shifts is the margin of the vote within those counties. And so if the, whatever the minority party is within a county, if it gets a little enthused and it cuts into the size of the majority party's lead, that's really helpful for the minority party. They don't have as many votes to make up elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's another place where these purple counties can be important not only for who wins them, but by how big the margin is for whichever party's the, the winner there. Well, you got one more poll. We look forward to that, and it's going to be an exciting uh, race to the finish here. It's going to be a good race. Sure seems like it, yes. All right. Professor Charles Franklin, Marquette Law School, thank you very much. Thanks, Charles. Have a thank good you. weekend. Great we'll see you see soon. You. Thanks.